Hello everybody and welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy and I'm back. I'll be your host tonight. We were away for a couple of weeks. Uh, had to travel up to Indiana to the Digital Woodcarver home office. Uh, did a live class for some of the Digital Woodcarver customers up there this past week. And um, so it took me away from uh, our kind of every other week schedule. But hey, thanks for joining and dropping in uh, tonight. I appreciate you all. Uh, so tonight is going to be a light night. We're not going to be heavy. We're not going to be long. Uh, we're going to talk about some uh, quick and simple household projects that we could make from scrap woods or, or what have you. It doesn't necessarily have to be scrap woods, but uh, that, that we could make that, that are low cost to us, uh, but could yield high profit. Um, a lot of different, you know, uh, things that we could look at for approaches and stuff. And um, we're also going to look at, you know, some tips and tricks and shortcuts and stuff in the software to kind of uh, just help you become a better designer uh, as we go along. So keep an eye out and an ear out for those. I'll let you know when there's a keyboard shortcut coming up. But... Um, it uh, it's not going to be too heavy, so don't uh, don't worry about no long. Our classes have been running long late, and we got to I got to stop that. Uh, it's uh, not enjoyable to go back and rewatch and having to dig through three and four hours of footage to find a certain part or something like that. I got to really rethink my strategy on uh, classes and timing and and videos and stuff. Um, you ever? You ever you ever go online and <clears throat> you not just not not necessarily online you ever in life you ever you ever meet someone in life that does what you do but does it better more structured more organized making more money than you could possibly fathom doing exactly the same thing that you do where you're struggling to make ends meet and they're just because they did it right or they're doing it right they're just coasting by and money's just rolling in right well <laughs> i met i met that such person that you know another another vetric trainer uh, ran into online and um, everything he's doing is is correct the right way uh, what I should be doing what I've been trying to get to for the last eight years evidently but uh, it uh, it made me think about you know there's about uh, going on 10,000 subscribers for the spindle TV channel and I want to thank each and every one of you I appreciate all of you I appreciate all of you for for hanging out, especially for as long as our classes are. Uh, I am looking at kind of uh, changing the way classes are done, uh, kind of, you know, make them more digestible. I think someone someone told me, someone that, that uh, one of my customers that uh, knows this other uh, creator uh, said that uh, I like him, Laney, because he dumbs things down and he makes it more digestible for me, a guy like me, to uh, absorb and learn from. Uh, whereas you are, your classes are a little bit longer and more involved. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hearing that face to face when I was up north, when I went up north and all, hearing that up north or hearing that face to face, it's like, yeah, you know, I really got to think about that. And, uh, um, I am, uh, I am, I've got too many skills and knowledge and, and stuff to pass on to people. I've got, I've got too much going for me as far as, uh, my experience, expertise, skills and all. Uh, I've got too much to be so poor. You know what I mean? So it's uh, time to change some things. So hopefully over the next coming weeks and all, you'll see some positive changes, 
some of the positive changes, check out uh, builditv.com, uh, our website, my website, builditv.com. You know, on, on in the in the shop section, there's all kinds of models that you can download for CNC and stuff. But I have a new page that I'm building. It's nowhere near finished yet, but there, it's building. Uh, it's my tools page, and it's tools that might be for the CNC or just in the shop or, you know, uh, what have you. Uh, just different tools that I've, I've used over the last uh, 20 years uh, that I recommend. Um, and, uh, you know, each of the links to those tools and stuff for Amazon and what have you, they're, they're affiliate links. So I get a small commission, you know, if something's purchased and stuff on there. Uh, but um, uh, I'm going to be adding to that because there's so many tools that, that I use and things that people always ask me about, uh, uh, you know, and um, I thought, you know what, let me start getting those things out on the page. So I started working on the website, getting there, and then now the ball's rolling, my mind's racing, and uh, we're going to knock it out of the park over the next couple of weeks. That's that's my goal anyway. All right, let's get into the class because I've just rambled on for a whole, you know, 10 minutes waiting for 7.15 to get here. So uh, let's go ahead and get into our class. Let's see if we can learn something. Uh, and uh, hey, maybe it's something that we might want to make and sell and, and all that wonderful jazz. And uh, we will go from there. So let's um, turn off a few things. I am on, what channel am I on over there? Uh, I am on camera number two. Yep, camera two. All right, let me bring myself down to the bottom left corner here. All right, I've got stuff in the background. <laughs> I've got stuff in the background uh, that doesn't, uh, that the, the green screen doesn't take away, right? So um, we'll, uh, We'll see if we can hide some of that a little bit. Okay. All right. So you should be able to see the screen. Wonderful. All that good jazz. Now, you know, I was uh, uh, looking online and uh, I had some I had some projects that I was trying to come up with some ideas for just simple things that you know that that we could make uh, for around the household that uh, that that makes uh, uh, for a very quick and, and, and simple project, uh, and where we could turn around and, and sell it for high amounts of money. And I'm going to show you, uh, some pages, uh, of things online that I found that, uh, just blows my mind what they're selling for and how low cost, I mean, we can actually make it. We're gonna break them down and we're gonna kind of design them and show you and stuff. So with that being said, let's take a look at product number one. So Mayfair, uh, Wayfair, not Mayfair, Wayfair is a site where, you know, you can go buy all kinds of cool household items uh, and things like that. And one of the items uh, in question is uh, this, Toilet paper holder, right? <laughs> so this wall toilet paper holder here. Now this particular toilet paper happens to be uh, cast out of concrete. So the the major uh, product here, uh, uh, that 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 little wall rack, if you will, um, it is it's made out of concrete. Well, uh, I surmise that, uh, and and it sells for one hundred forty five dollars. Holy cow! Um, I surmise that, you know, yeah, concrete is, a, you know, a decent idea. We could, uh, all right, let's, let's make the mold. Like, let's cut out some wood and, and create the mold frame so we can pour the concrete in, right? Or epoxy, make a cool uh, epoxy. Uh, I don't know how expensive the epoxy would be. It'd probably be expensive on epoxy, but still, could probably sell it for more. But a nice epoxy fill with some kind of decorative you know, uh, filament and stuff in it or something, you know, these are wall, uh, wall art and stuff. And, um, I mean, when we look at, you know, items like this and let's pull up a, another one here 
you know, uh, a simple item uh, like this uh, here, uh, simple scrap wood. Uh, I don't know why I'm a, a fixated right at this second with toilet paper racks, but um, uh, I'm gonna show you how to make this quick and simple. Now we're gonna use a combination of the CNC and a table saw or a hand saw or a jigsaw, uh, you know, whatever tools you have, but I'm gonna show you on the CNC how we can do some uh, quick and simple notch cuts and stuff if we, uh, you know, if we want, but also we'll talk about how, you know, it can be made by hand too, very quickly and easily. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at another one here. Uh, on Etsy, uh, we got a very cool, another toilet paper rack that hangs on a wall, this little octagon, uh, hexagon type, uh, you know, honeycomb, I guess you would call it, uh, type of things, $85 and, um, you know, uh, 2,576 reviews on that one item. Uh, yeah, 4.7 star rating. I mean, that's, yeah, cool, right? Let's take a look at another one, right? So uh, we'll get we'll get away from the toilet paper rollers holder here in a minute, but um, here's another one. Um, very quick and simple uh, type of part that we could cut out. Uh, and, uh, you know, 52 bucks, right? for just, you know, a couple of pieces of scrap wood and some dowel rods. Well, hey, thank you, Roger Brown and David Lowell. Uh, Lowell, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for those super chats. I appreciate you, right? So looking at these uh, things, and I want to thank all these websites and everything for, you know, allowing me to, you know, kind of show what these people are making. Um, and uh, it's amazing uh, what, you know, what they are uh, doing and stuff. And I thought, you know, that's insane, right? Uh, there's all kinds of different examples and stuff. Well, I thought about, okay, well, if we make, if we make uh, some of these items, you know, what would be what would be a, a quick and easy way to do? So let's let's talk about the concrete one for a minute, right? Now that concrete, uh, um, the concrete. Uh, toilet paper rack holder uh, and just to uh, get back let me pull it back up here this one here again right uh, most toilet paper rolls like and we're talking toilet paper tonight this thing has gone to the shitter <laughs> but uh, we're talking toilet paper right so we've got um, the uh, overall length you're looking at about uh, 21 and 5 8 inches in length uh, 4.7 inches uh, wide. Now, most toilet paper rolls are four inches wide and between four and seven inches in diameter, right? Uh, four and a half inches in diameter is a good solid number to work with when you're making your parts and stuff. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But so, um, so uh, the... Um, this particular concrete part is about 3.94, just under four inches wide. Uh, it's about 4.72 inches tall from the bottom to the top of the, 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 the part, about 21 and 5 eighths inches long, right? All right, so let's imagine, if you will, I'm gonna make it out of plywood. We're gonna do plywood first, right? And um, if I wanted, if I'm using, let's say roughly three quarter inch plywood, 23, 30 seconds, um, if I am, uh, if I am um, doing a four inch part and I'm working with, let's say roughly three quarter inch plywood, I'm gonna need about uh, 5.3 parts, 5.3 pieces glued together to make that four inches roughly. And, um, and for those of you just, I gotta, I gotta say this cause David Lowell, thank you, man. This is David Lowell's first time doing a super chat. I really appreciate that, David. But, uh, super chats guys is, is, uh, what you see on the screen, you'll see Roger Brown and David. Those are, uh, down on the bottom, you'll see a little dollar sign under where you can type in a chat and there's little stickers and, and little things that you can do. The super chats that these guys are using, it puts their comment up, uh, at the top of the screen longer and everything. And uh, um, and then the little stickers and stuff. And it's just a way to support the channel. So you guys, I really appreciate you for that. And that's what that is. But getting back to this. So I'm going to take a piece of plywood. Um, 
I, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go cheap, you know. But it's gonna, I'm gonna be painting it, right? I'm gonna paint it. I can paint it all kind of different colors, so I don't need to go really crazy with it. So just like kind of a birch plywood and everything, and a four by eight sheet, uh, that could yield me. Um, uh, a four by eight sheet is about eighty four dollars at my lows here in Florida, believe it or not. Um, of birch, wow, Baltic birch, right? A uh, birch, uh, oak. We're you know much higher than that and everything, but plywood still hasn't come down at all. But if I have a 26 inch piece by 24 inch tall, and I'm gonna go, you know, 23 30 seconds, uh, which is 0.71875. Now, by the way, the boxes that I'm typing in in the job setup here, if you don't know a particular decimal, uh, these boxes are calculators. Uh, and you can do fraction to decimal conversion. You can do metric to imperial conversion and imperial to metric conversion and all. And so if I didn't know that 23.30 seconds was 0.71875, you can simply just type in the fraction and hit the equal key, not the enter key, but the equal key on the keyboard and it'll do the fraction to decimal conversion. So I've got a piece of uh, plywood 26 by 24 by 0.71875. I'm gonna uh, reference off the machine bed because I'm cutting out parts. I don't wanna uh, you know, beat up my wasteboard too bad. And I'm gonna work from the uh, bottom left corner. That's kind of my start point. That's where I work off of. You can pick anywhere you want. We're gonna click OK. And we're going to lay out this part, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a rectangle. Now, if you remember what I said earlier about the dimensions of this part, from the bottom of this part to kind of the top of it, we're about 0.472 on that on the one that's being sold for $145, right? So, all right, so we'll we'll work with that. So on the height, I'm gonna go uh, 4.72. And the width was, in, in their case, it was 21.65. Now. I'll probably end up going the full 24, but let's just, we'll just for kicks and giggles, we'll go that 21.625, round it up a little bit. Um, not 221, um, but 21. Work with me there, work with me, work with me. 21.625. And I'm gonna create that uh, rectangle here. And a oh Lord have mercy, hold on a second, 4.72. 20, let's do it right now. 21 is the width, 21.625 is the width, and the height is 4.72. There we go. Now, this particular part, this cloud, right? And I'm gonna import uh, the picture in um, here, so you can, so we can kind of have a visual, right? So you can understand what's happening here. So there's, think of five rolls, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then those rolls you can stack on top and it creates this cool little kind of cloud effect or what have you and stuff like that. Um, the, uh, from the bottom to the kind of the top here, it's about 4.72 and then the width is, uh, you know, 21.625 is what I'm going. And the rolls of toilet paper, remember what I said earlier is about an average roll uh, is anywhere from four to seven inches, depending on the plies and all that stuff. But 4.5 is a good safe number. 4.5 is a good safe number uh, for any of the parts that we're gonna make that a roll of toilet paper, a, 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 a decent roll of toilet paper. I use Cottonelle with the ridges and all that stuff and it's plump, you know. But a four and a half inch uh, opening will be fine, right? So I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to bring a circle up to four and a half inches, right? Now, when drawing a circle, you can drag a shape out to size. And if I wouldn't have hit that 4.5 inches uh, and stuff right out of the gate, if I had just let go of my mouse, I can come over here and I could adjust 4.5 and hit apply and I could adjust it, right? Um, or I could just type in the value that I want and just simply click, and wherever I click is where the center of that object's gonna fall. Now I need five of these circles, right? These five circles are going to represent these rolls of toilet paper, okay? 
Now, for the most part, I want them somewhat in some kind of order. You know what I mean? Side by side. Because what I'm going to do first is I, I want to, I'm going to get them sized and spaced inside this area here. Uh, and I'm going to be using my alignment tool and my space selection tool and things uh, to help me with that. So I'm going to select these five circles. I'm going to select this rectangle last. Now that last item I select is my boundary. So whatever I selected first, I'm going to be aligning to whatever I selected last, my alignment boundary. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to align to center. So basically right now, all five of those circles are stacked on top of each other in the center of this rectangle, right? And uh, if you hear on the microphone, if it picks it up, if you hear snoring in the background, my big cat is snoring. And I'm sorry if you, if you hear it, but uh, he is loud. Okay. So it's going to center it. Now I'm going to take at the bottom of the alignment tool, I'm going to take this inside last vector box and check it because I want to do all this inside the last vector. And I want to space them horizontally. So I got horizontally or vertically. I want to go horizontally, right? And so that's going to kind of pull this spacing, if you will, here. Okay? All right. Now, the... Uh, Three of the circles, uh, these three here, are going to be at, at the bottom of them. Or you could go center, right? I guess center and bottom would be the same thing. But they're going to be in line with one another. Okay? Now, the two remaining ones here, they're going to be dropped down. And what I found as far as a good shape and a good design and all that stuff and everything is that uh, if I select both of those and I bring them down, I want to bring them down to the half circle mark, you know? Okay, so that's going to give me this kind of this position here, right? Cool beans? Okay. Now, so that's gonna give me, give me that's gonna that's going to kind of give me my initial layout. Now let's go back to the photo for a minute, and let's talk about it for a second. So the thickness, this face, right, the face, that's about one inch thick, and that's what we're gonna go with. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is on these circles here, we're gonna select the circles, uh, not the rectangle. We'll turn that off. Well, I'll show you how we're gonna use that again in just a moment. But in these circles, we're going to create an offset about an eighth of an inch away. So imagine the circles are the actual rolls of toilet paper. Okay, the four and a half inch circles here. These are the actual rolls of the toilet paper. Now we're creating the top profile of the part that we're making, right? This kind of uh, shelf, if you will. So we're going to offset these circles outward. We're going to use the offset tool. We're going to offset outward an eighth of an inch. And we don't need sharp corners for this. Uh, we're going to offset outward here. And um, uh, that's going to you know, give us this uh, initial shape here. Now we could also, I could surmise that we go, uh, why, let me see what, let me see if I go three eighths, what looks better for me. Um, my roll of toilet paper sitting on the shelf. I'm gonna quarter of an inch it, let's go quarter, point, no, oh, no, I like it better. I'm gonna go 0 0.1875. Now, how I come up with this number, it's just mentally, I'm not, it's, it's nothing, you know, nothing, you know, uh, off, but uh, I think, imagine my roll, I'm thinking like it's sitting in this cup. I, I don't want the, 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 the curve of my shelf. I don't want, I don't want it to be tight 
on my roll, right? I want it to. I want my roll just to sit in there. I want it to be a little open. So three eighths is too big. An eighth is too small. What's kind of somewhat in the middle? We'll go with we'll go with three sixteenths, right? You know, point one eight seven five. That'll be good. Uh, so let's do that. And I'm happy with that because it kind of brings me somewhat close, you know, here and all, and I'm good there. Um, that uh, that works for me. Um, it works for me. Let me just check one thing. Gonna go a quarter. God, that works for me too. All right, let's go a quarter. I'll make up my mind here. This is what happens when you design on the fly, you know. Uh, we're gonna go a quarter. So we've got our, we're gonna do a quarter inch offset. Select all the circles and we're gonna do a quarter inch offset. Okay, now, um, when we do that quarter inch offset, I'm gonna make sure that select new is selected, right? So it selects that new offset, right? Now I'm gonna offset to create the bottom profile. Uh, so that's gonna be, I'm gonna go one inch, okay? You with me so far? All right. Now I'm gonna take this and one inch, and one inch, one inch, that, yeah, I'm happy with one inch. Okay, so now I'm gonna take all of these parts except for the rectangle. Again, the rectangle is just gonna be kind of, for me, I'll show you how we use it in just a minute. And I'm gonna drag, well, let's group it together so we don't mess anything up. Let's hit G on the keyboard. That's a keyboard shortcut. G for group. I'm gonna drag that straight up and I'm gonna snap the bottom of this to the bottom of my part here, okay? Now, I'm gonna take this rectangle and 21 is just too small for what I wanna do. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna bring this rectangle out some. About like that. There we go. All right. Now the magic happens, right? Here's what we do. We're, we're literally done. We made the part. You can't, you might not see it yet, but we made it. Here's where it reveals itself. We're going to come in here with our scissors and let's trim this away. Let's trim this. Oh, can't trim when it's grouped, right? So U for ungroup. Let's close the tool, select our group and hit the letter U to ungroup. Go back to our scissors and let's trim away that top line, right? Let's trim away all of our kind of outer pieces here of our toilet paper. And in here, we don't need this circle or these parts in here, right? So get rid of the circles. Those are the rolls of toilet paper and their little offsets and stuff. Get rid of that line, trim all that away. Zoom in and trim that away and that away. All right, now on our part here, I don't want sharp points there. I want nice and rounded and stuff like that. So I'm gonna use my fillet tool, right? I'm gonna use the fillet tool. Almost looks like Olympic rings, right? Almost look like the Olympic circles, exactly. I'm gonna use my fillet tool and I'm just gonna go an eighth inch normal fillet radius and I'm basically, when I move my mouse over these sharp points, you'll get this little check mark here. And then I can check that off and I'm just gonna round that off. All right? Okay. Now, so let's look at our part and let's look at our, kind of our muse, if you will. Not too shabby, right? Not too shabby, right? That's it. All right? Okay. Now, this part, this concrete part here for $145, if I wanted to imagine that I wanted to uh, create a mold or something, right? 
I could cut out two of these pieces. I could have, you know, a top and a bottom. Hell, I could create out of MDF, I could cut out a bunch of pieces and glue them together or whatever, but I could create some kind of mold. Uh, and I would want to be able to pour inside of that, right, for the, for the concrete or the resin all. Fine, no problem. I'll just go ahead and offset that outward. Let's go an eighth of an inch, right? And that'll create my mold that I can, you know, uh, that I can create that part. Uh, I can cut my cavity here and my profile cut. And I could have, or I could just cut that part, whatever the case may be. Uh, and uh, I, could, I could make some kind of mold for, you know, a pocket cut, if you will. And, and, you know, a glued up piece. I could do my pocket cut here so I could pour that in. And, you know make it right but we're not doing that we're making the whole thing out of wood we're going to glue together sand it and all that wonderful pretty jazz and paint it paint it so if i want this to be roughly if i want this to be roughly 3.94 inches wide uh or four inches that's what a roll of toilet paper is let's just go four inches if i were to uh, I'm just going to open up any box. I don't care what box. I'll open up the move box. If I type in four inches, the number four, and I divide that, right, by 0.71875, which is my 2330 seconds here, and I hit equals, we're looking at roughly about five and a half pieces, right? Okay. We can bring it down to five or we can bring it up to six, right? I'm going to bring it up to six. Okay, I'm going to bring it up to six. If I want to, when it's all glued up and everything, if I want to run it through the bandsaw or whatever and, and trim it or the, whatever, I want to run it through the bandsaw or I want to trim it down to four inches, I can. Or if I want to leave it, you know, just a little bit where the toilet paper is not overhanging it and all that stuff, that's fine too. But I need roughly six pieces. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to drag up one, let go of the mouse. I'm keeping the control key held down. Three, four, five, six pieces, right? Now, I want to make sure that, you know, my pieces are somewhat spaced to where, you know, when I'm cutting them out with a quarter inch bit uh, and all that good jazz, um, everything fits well and all on my part. And I could draw a rectangle here. And I could select all of these parts and select this rectangle last and have it space the parts equal distance, right, vertically. But if I do that, there's a possibility that my parts go off the board. I don't know why that is. I would want to assume that automatically that it would stay within the boundary, but it doesn't. I'm not sure why. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna make my rectangle shorter. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. Make sure it's only the rectangle you got selected. I'm going to make my rectangle shorter, about like that, uh, somewhere in there. I'm going to select my five parts, or six parts. What, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, my six parts. I'm going to select that rectangle last, and I'm going to do that again, space that out. And that's too close, right? My router bit can't get in there, you know, and all that stuff. So, one more time. There's a method to this. I don't know what the method is, but there is one. I'm gonna make my part just a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, one more time. Let's select all six pieces. Select that rectangle last and align vertically. There we go. Um, and I should be okay if I take a quarter inch diameter circle, 0.25, and I pop it right there. Should have plenty of room in between the parts when it cuts them out, right? So now I'm going to cut out these parts out of this piece of plywood. I'm going to cut out these parts. I'm going to 
stack glue them together, edge glue them together. When they're all glued together and everything, I'm going to, you know, clean up and sand and stuff, you know. If I have an orbital, you know, kind of an oscillating spindle sander, that would be great, right? But if I don't, by hand, it's not going to kill me. But I'm going to make a nice smooth part, and then I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint it gray or paint it blue or paint it brown or paint it whatever color would blend with, you know, someone's bathroom, right? It could be any color, white even, you know what I mean? And... Um, and yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I have this part, right? Now, okay, Lainey, we've got this part. But what's going to be a good way to hang it on a wall? Right? Okay. Well, I could, I could get, bear with me a second. Give me just a moment. I could get there we go. Let me pop this over here. I could get a simple keyhole hanger, right? Mount it on the back and everything, and boom, right? And you know, these little keyhole hangers, they're not too expensive. Uh you get a, you know, a uh uh, $3.49 per pack. One would go, you know, probably here, one over here kind of thing. Or I could even do a keyhole in one of these six parts and I just have to make sure that that one part is on the end, right? Don't glue it in the middle, right? Glue it on the backside, you know, or what have you so that, uh, you know, I have those keyholes that I could use to hang. I... I don't see why, uh, you know, uh, let's look at Amazon here. Um, I can get a whole uh, pack of these, a um, hundred pieces for $16.99, right? A hundred pack of those. Why not? Uh, I don't need to really, I could, because I have a CNC, I could make keyholes in one of the parts, you know, and all that stuff, but I don't need to. Why? When I can just get that, the hardware, right? So now I could make this out of MDF because it's going to get painted. I could make this out of plywood because it's going to get painted. I could make it out of solid wood, right? If I made it out of solid wood... I wouldn't make it solid. I would create two parts, a front and a back. Let's go back to our photo, kind of a representation here. Uh, let's go back online here. Uh, not that one. That, well, that's similar. Uh, but here, let's click on this. I'd make a front and a back spaced four inches apart. And the, oops, let me click on that. The dowel rod here is, come on now, the dowel rod here, uh, that's a metal rod, quarter inch dowel metal rod. You could do a wooden dowel rod, right? There's four of them in there. One, two, there's another one hiding over here, three, and then at the end, four, right? I'm going to show you how to make this one too in just a minute. But, so if I was making it out of solid wood, purple heart, walnut, cherry, maple, whatever the case may be, then I would make it where I have a front, I have a back, and then I have these nice spacers, right? They don't have, it doesn't have to be solid. It doesn't have to be solid um, like my photo here, right? It doesn't have to be like that. But if I wanted a solid one, then I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, it's probably going to be painted. I'm not going to do that. It's going to be too, a little bit too expensive to do it out of solid wood to be solid like that. But since it's going to be painted and covered and everything, primed and painted and what have you, MDF, uh, plywood, very inexpensive. I can cut you know six parts out, glue them together, clean them up all nice and sand them all pretty, paint them and prime them, whatever the situation may be, put a clear coat on it, whatever you want to do. Uh, and uh, I can make that part, right? Now, if I was doing just the two parts, 
then I would, you know, my dowel position, right? My dowel position, um, I want to get, you know, my, you know, dowel rods in there. And so basically there would be one, uh, you know, uh, somewhere on the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one part, snap it down to another, right? So they're on top of each other. Okay. And that way the holes line up. And I'm going to take this, if you recall, this width roughly about one inch, right? If I come in here and I go into node editing mode and I cut the vector here, and on the back side, I cut the vector, right click and cut the vector here. I've just cut that back line free from everything else. Now, if I offset that line, if I offset that line, either outward or inward, depending on where the line starts and ends. But if I go in a half an inch, and that was the wrong direction. If I go in a half an inch, it kind of gives me somewhat of a center line, if you will, right? And I can take this hole here, this quarter inch diameter hole, and I'm going to... Uh, Take that hole. I'm going to select this center line. And I'm going to use the copy along a vector tool. That copy along a vector tool will allow me to copy multiple objects. I, I can make as many as I want. A hundred of these, four of these, five of these, six, twenty, whatever the case may be. I just want four copies to follow this line. So I'm going to click copy and it's going to place these four circles, but it always keep this in mind. Now it always places the end circles where the end of the line is at the center. And that's okay. I'm just going to uh, use a guideline. I want to kind of keep things consistent for myself. And I'm going to bring that guy, I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a relative guideline. Now I went up into the, into the, um, the ruler up here and I just hold down that left mouse button and drag that guideline down. It, the guidelines, I can pull them out of different, the sides and the top and stuff and it helps with layout. But if I right click on the guideline, it gives me the properties of that guideline. Now I'm going to make a relative guide down. That's going to be a negative number. And I'm going to go down three quarters of an inch. Okay. And the, uh, let's, let's go five eighths. I'm going to, let's go five eighths. So I'm going to go down 0.625. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of the, uh, one that I didn't want. Okay. Now, the reason why I put that there is because that way I can stay consistent because I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to drag it along this line and snap it to that intersection right there. So I want to snap it right here on this intersection on this end. And I want to do the same thing on this end. Snap it there. All right. And now I can, let's get rid of all my guidelines and stuff. I can get rid of that center line. Now I've got my four holes, right? That I can, you know, use to, to cut the parts, but I need it for both of my parts, right? Um, and so remember now, one of my parts I cut the back line off on. And if you, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see that I, when I selected this, it's pink here, but it's black back here. That's because this line is not, it's not connected to the other line because I cut it earlier to make that offset. So I need to select my front and my back and I need to go to the join tool and rejoin it to close it back up. I need to take my four circles, right? 
watch this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy. Now when I copy, it copies not only the shapes, but it copies the location of those shapes. So when I take that shape and those four circles and I move that up, right? Notice I don't have the circles here, right? But if I right click and paste, it'll paste those circles back in the location where they were copied from, right? So I copied, so I could drag that copy up of the circles because I already had the copy of the shape, you know, on top. And I moved it basically up and then just hit paste and it pasted the circles back where they were originally copied from, right? So now I have my two parts here. The, again, the two parts and the six parts are completely different. We're talking about two different things now. One is glued up to make a full solid six inch, you know, or four and a half inch wide piece. And then two of them is going to have a dowel rod in between if I wanted to do solid wood and, um, you know, and, and have that dial connection, right? So thumbs up on that one. You got that one. That's not a bad idea, right? I'll make these vectors available to you guys. Okay, let's move that along. Okay, pretty straightforward and simple. I wouldn't try to sell it for $145, but I darn sure know that because let me let Let's let's back up the train for a second, ladies and gentlemen. And let's let's talk about this for a second. This part, right? Wayfair, 4.6 star rating, 285 reviews. That's nothing to sneeze at. 285 of these were sold at $145. Right? Now, I'm not going to try to sell them for $145, but $65, $75, I'm still making a good amount of profit on it for sure, right? Um, it's crazy, right? All right. Now, let's talk about item number two, okay? Item number two is this very cool kind of honeycomb octagon, hexagon uh, shape here, pattern and all that stuff. Now, when we do this one, when we create this one, there's going to be some waste. There's going to be some waste and there's going to be more waste than I like. So we're going to use that waste for another project. So there's going to be no waste. We're going to, we're going to minimize as much waste as we can. I wanted to pre-emphasize that to you because I want you to see what we're going to, how we're going to do that. All right. So let's take our part here. I'm, I'm still going to kind of stick with this 24 just for right now. Um, no, I'm not. That's a lie. Let's go and create a new sheet. Sheets. All right, sheet number two is going to be my, uh, I'm going to call it my honeycomb holder, <laughs> right? Honeycomb holder. All right, so this part, the honeycomb holder, we're going to edit that. And now, mind you, remember now, the inside of this is going to be four and a half inches diameter or, you know, uh, you know uh, inside. The outside, how thick our walls are going to be, right? Um, let's say that we go with a three eighths inch thick wall uh, and stuff. That's three quarters and all. So, you know, we're going to be, you know, around, you know, five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to go with a, uh, a one by eight, which is seven and a quarter. And we'll work with that to start off with. Okay. Now, I don't know if it needs to be uh, 26 inches long. But we're going to do that for right now, and then we'll, I'll get the length size in just a moment, okay? So, seven and a quarter, one by eight board. Now, in our drawing tools, we have a cool tool called Draw Polygon. That allows us to draw, you know, multi-sided uh, shapes. Hexagon, octagon, decagon, 
triangle, whatever, you know, our geometric shapes and everything. Now, this is gonna be a hexagon. It's gonna be uh, six sides. And mind you that if, if our inside measurement from one side to the other is four and a half, you would think, you would think that my midline would be, would be, you know, two and a quarter, right? Two and a quarter and two and a quarter is four and a half. That's not necessarily the case when we're doing this. So this radius shape here, basically when we're looking at the shape and all, it's creating from the center to not a flat line, but to a point, to one of the points, not one of the flats. So we have to add a little bit extra. So in this case, for the size that I want, it's going to be 2.6. That's the magic number. Now, if I click and drop that here, if I take a measurement from here to here, if I take a measurement from here to here, right, we are just a smidge over 4.5, right? And that's fine. So that's good. That's where we're at. Okay, we don't need to be, you know, too picky. Four and a half is a good inner dimension for a roll to fit into, right? So that 2.6 is going to create our hexagon to the size that we need. Now, we're going to offset this by how thick we want our walls to be. Now, on our walls, I'm going to do... Uh, three eighths and I want sharp corners in straight lines basically sharp corners and straight lines and uh, I want to select the new and I want to create that shape now I went the wrong way I need to go outward not inward outward okay so that's one of my parts I'm gonna group that together for right now now we are gonna go five of these, okay? So I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna drag out one. Don't do what I just did there. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, two, three, four, five. Don't worry. We don't need a bigger board. They all got to fit together a certain way, right? All right. So we're going to take this shape and we're going to stack it right there. We're going to take this shape and we're going to stack it right there. Make sure you hit your mark. We're going to take this shape and stack it right there. And we're gonna take this shape and stack it right there. So basically, let me get it on the board. Center. Okay, so a one by eight is not quite tall enough. Dang it. It was tall enough for the inner, but not for the outer, right? So let's go with a, a one by do they sell one by tens or does it jump automatically to one by 12? I think they sell one by tens and they're nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter. Is it nine and a quarter or nine and a half? I know it's a quarter. Uh, one by eight is seven and a quarter. A uh, one by 10 dimensions, actual size, it should be nine. And a quarter, nine and a quarter. Yeah, everything is a quarter. I knew that. I just don't know why I went brain dead for a minute. All right, let's go in and edit this. Click on our honeycomb holder, edit that, and make that nine and a quarter. Okay, let's get this centered on the board. Use our alignment tool and align to center. Okay. Now, in here, first of all, we're going to ungroup these parts. And we're going to uh, 
um, we're going to uh, snip, snip, and trim, trim, and all that good stuff uh, to kind of connect these together. Um, and there's only going to be on the front part and the back part, there's only four dowel rods, one, two, three, four, and they're going to be located right off of the inside one. There's going to be two here and two here. That's it. Okay. Now this shape could be whatever you want it to be. You could stack these however you want. They don't have to be stacked like this. I stacked it like this so that these lines run, you know, straight across there. We could flip that, right? So it looks like that. It could be rotated on the wall. So it looks like that. It could, I mean, however you want to hang these things, right? Um, and so I'm going to, um, I'm going to hang mine like this, right? Kind of thing. So when we uh, come in here, before I delete these lines, okay, before I go in and delete the lines, I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete the span here and that's going to delete one of them, okay? That's going to leave the other one, okay? I want to keep that other one for a moment. Over on this side, same thing. I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete the span. And that's just going to leave one line there. You can tell by the white and pink dotted line instead of white and black or pink and black. And the reason why I want to keep that one line there is I want to use the center point and I want, I want to be able to snap to it and things like that. Now, I'm going to use a guideline. Let's delete all the guides for right now. View guidelines and delete all guides. I'm going to bring down a brand new guideline and I'm going to throw it right here. And I'm going to drag a second guideline. Now, I don't, it, it doesn't have to be like any particular, you know, oh, I'm, I need to be an inch from here, an inch from there, one inch from here, one inch from there. It doesn't need to be any particular place. We just want to, um, you know, choose a good location uh, for our, our two dowel rods, right? Some good stability. We don't want them too close. We don't want them too far, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so now I have a place to snap my quarter inch circle to there and there. And then over on this side here and here. Okay, that's going to be my dowel holes, right? Right? All right. Okay. Um, everyone needs a toilet paper uh, holder. Uh, hold to, everyone needs to hold toilet paper. It's a big market. And that is a fact, Jack. Now, um, I'll, I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm straight up transparent right now. You know what made me think about this and all and everything? I have a old-fashioned plunger with a wooden handle big black rubber wooden plunger with a wooden handle that sits kind of behind my between my wall and my my toilet the back of the toilet and uh there's a toilet brush there and then there's this plunger my extra rolls of toilet paper get slid over the handle of the plunger because i barely <laughs> use the plunger so it's become the roll holder right I can do, and then of course I actually have a toilet paper dispenser, you know, kind of thing, but I've got this tower, this leaning tower of piece of <laughs> toilet paper, you know, next to the commode that, uh, you know, I thought to myself, you're a woodworker, you can do better, right? And that's where this all came about and everything. Um, but so now we have this part here. Now we're going to go in and we need to kind of connect the dots if you will, right? Uh, we need to kind of connect things. So I can get rid of the guidelines and I'm, I'm not gonna delete them. I'm just gonna turn them off by clicking on the top corner over here to turn them off. And now I can come in and I can use my scissors and I can, you know, uh, trim that line. I can trim that line there. I can trim that line there, trim, 
trim, trim, and trim, and trim to get rid of that, right? Now, in the back of one of the parts, we're going to take the guideline again, then I'm going to turn it back on. In the back of one of the parts, there's going to be uh, a drill, a through hole all the way through and a countersink. And that's, that's what's going to get, you know, screwed into the wall, right? That's how this thing gets mounted to the wall. Now, where that hole is, um, is, you know, going to be based, you know, on, you know, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's holding toilet paper. So it doesn't necessarily have to be mounted to a stud, right? Um, and all, but, uh, we would probably use those drywall anchors, you know, the little drywall anchors and our screw and everything like that. And we're going to have it countersunk. Um, and, uh, uh, what have you. Um, we don't necessarily have to like every 16th inch on center or stuff like that. We just need a good place to make these holes to mount it. Cause again, it's only holding rolls of toilet paper. It's not, you know, it's not a lot of weight. So the drywall anchors are going to be plenty, right? Kind of thing. Um, now where you want to position those holes are, you know, up to you and everything. But most of these octagon type holders and all, the holes are here on this inside part. The holes in the countersink um, are, are here, you know. I, I probably, me personally and all, um, I, I, would, I would say a little too close. I would probably go out here, you know, and everything. Um, and, uh, and that be the position. Um, I could, you know, go into one of, you know, up these upper areas up here where it's a little bit wider apart, whatever the case may be, but I want to kind of be in, in these wide areas here that I've got. And so I'm going to drill four holes and countersink them. And I'm going to let the, and it's only going to be in one of the parts. Okay. The back part. And the installer, the customer will be able to choose in my instructions, right? They can choose whichever holes they want to use. They can choose to use, they're going to have enough screws and anchors uh, that they can use all four holes if they want to. They can use the two outside holes or they can use the two inside holes, whatever they want to do. That's what it'll say in a little bit more professional tone uh, and stuff like that. So, I'm going to take a third guideline and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to bring it just, I want to kind of be up high, but just under, plenty under here for a hole and a countersink. Okay. And so I'm going to take my hole. Now the hole, the through hole, I'm going to, it's going to be an eighth inch hole. I'm not going to go quarter inch. I'm not going to be, you know, a big quarter inch and everything. So I'm going to have, um, and I should have kept that center line. Bear with me just a second. I, I want to, I want this thing centered, right? So, um, I should, I'm going to undo my deletes, the lines, you know, that I got rid of so I can have my center lines to, to bring my holes to, and then I'll go back and retrim them, but I'm going to hit control Z. Uh, so control Z, I'm going to put my center lines back just for a moment, right? I'm going to put my center lines back for a moment because when I snap, I'm going to do an eighth inch hole. First hole is going to be an eighth inch. I want to be able to have a point to, you know, uh, snap to, right? My center. And that was nowhere near center, Laney. Okay. And I'm going to take this one and... There. This one. Snap it there. And this one. Snap it there. Now, again, this is going to be the through hole, the eighth inch. And again, it's only going to be on one part, not both. We've got a face and a back. Now, 
I want to countersink two. I'm not going to draw a second hole, I, but I am going to use this eighth inch circle with a 90 degree V bit. And I'm just going to do a drilling toolpath to a certain depth. So the 90 degree V bit kind of creates a little bit of a countersink, right? So I don't need a second hole. Um, so that's all I need for the holes. Now that I have the holes where I want them in all, um, now I can go through and do my trim again. So let's go back and let's trim. Now this one takes a couple of clicks because there's multiple lines on top of each other and then the ones out here only have the one line. So it's just a single click. All right. All right. So that's my part. Now, the second part going to get cut out, you know, the same, but without the, um, without the through holes here. And they are still going to get the, uh, the holes for the, um, uh, for the rods, you know, the front, you know, the rods that hold them together and stuff. So keep this in mind. Uh, it's not a two sided part or anything like that. We're cutting one side. And since the, we're drilling the holes and all here and doing the countersinks and all that stuff on the CNC, uh, good side, your face down on the table. Okay. Face down on the table. Cause we're going to be doing these holes, you know, the shallow holes for our rods to go in our dowel rods and stuff. And you can use wooden or metal dowels. That's up to you. Uh, and then our through holes and countersink. So good face down. Now, here's where I was talking about the space, right? The, the, the wasted, wasted space, if you will. Okay. If I'm cutting out these octagons and cutting out this shape and everything, I got all of this wasted wood here that doesn't need to be a wasted wood, right? So what are my, what, what options do I have? Well, let me, let me pull up a couple. Okay, household items, right? So, coasters, right? If I'm making this out of, uh, let me minimize this for a minute. If I'm making this out of solid wood, right? I've got all of this space in here. I could, you know, I could do custom engravings and I could make wedding coasters. I could, you know, do what have you. And the coasters could, they could be pocketed out, you know, a little pocket cut. I would draw the vectors because I'm going to be creating all the tool paths and stuff like that. I could draw the vectors and all that good stuff, right? Uh, and I could make coasters. So that's one option, one option, okay? So different shape coasters uh, could be, bear with me a second, could be made out of the waste wood, right? Coaster sets, okay? Now, we have, keep this in mind, we have five holes here. A coaster set is typically a four-piece set. So for every four of these parts, we'll have a coaster set, right? So we have, you know, these one, two, three, four, there's that fifth one, right? That gets set aside. Then the next one, that gets set aside and all that. And with the ones that would get set aside, they might be different species or what have you. Uh, and we could create, you know, uh, 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 decorative ones and painted ones or, or what have you uh, and things like that. Or if they're all out of the same species of wood, then great, wonderful. Uh, that kind of thing. But uh, for uh, unless you do a five piece coaster set, it's going to be four piece. Typically for me, it's four piece. So I have that one and it'll, it'll get added to the others when I'm cutting all these parts out. Right. So that's one thing that I could do in here for like small drink coasters. Okay. Now, mind you, keep in mind, there's not a whole lot of room here. There's not, a, there's not a whole lot of room in here. But imagine, if you will, that I have a quarter inch bit. Uh, I got a quarter inch bit coming here and cutting. 
And so let me take one of these shapes and I'm gonna offset them inward, offset it inward, and I'll go, um, I'll go a little bit more than a quarter. Let's go, no, actually, why am I gonna go a little more than a quarter? Let's go a quarter. Uh, I'll go 0.26, offset inward, right? Now, this particular coaster, um, if, I, if I did it as a coaster, right? Uh, it has a height of about 3.98 inches uh, and a side measurement of about 3.98 inches. So if I measure my vertical height of this one here to here, okay? And if I do my length measurement, my side measurement here to here, okay? So about 3.99, 3.98, that kind of thing, about four inches. And that typically for me is what size my coasters are that I make anyway, right? So, you know, that is, um, that is a possibility. Uh, and it gives me a way that, uh, you know, on those cutoffs that I don't have anything wasted. Now, let's think about something else. What if, what if in here, you know, I've got about four inches to play with, let, you know, say that and everything. Um, if I need you all to stand by one moment while I measure something really quickly. Give me one moment. Bring it in with me. All right. So this is uh, from our Ocala, Florida here, Marion 106 uh, Black. It's given to me as a gift. I don't drink, so uh, it's brand new. But the diameter of this is right at three inches. Now, I know that bottles of wine and, and things like that vary. In diameter uh, and, and stuff and all but if I wanted to I could take my part here and I'm gonna I'm going to offset let me get rid of the measurements so this is option number two besides the coasters okay let me get rid of the measurements here and I'm gonna get rid of this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of my inside vectors. And I'm gonna offset them inward, inward, 0.26, sharp corners. I want those sharp corners and all offset. Now, I'm gonna take those, oh, let me try that again. While they're selected, I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna drag this down off the board for a moment. Can y'all still see that when it's off the board? Uh, let me do this. Let me take another layer, add a new layer. Let me take these objects and move them to that layer. And then let me turn this off for a moment and bring this back up on the screen so that we could see here. Okay. Now, if 
let's say that let's say that roughly or typically a bottle would be um, let's say that a roughly a bottle would be around three inches in diameter or something like that. You, you know, we can measure and see what different ones are and stuff. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of bottles laying around to measure, but I'm gonna offset that inward. And if I'm at if I'm at 3.9, and I want to kind of get down to roughly around three, then I could go that 0.9. But I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna offset. Let me see if I do this right. I'm gonna offset inward 0.75. No, I didn't do my math right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that has, that's 2.48 inches. So that was 0.75 is not, is, is too big. I need to go smaller. I need to offset inward 0.375, 3 That'll be good. And that's fine. Same, same wall thickness as my bigger one, three eighths, right? Now, what that leaves me with is that leaves me with a shape here that's 3.23 inches in height and length, uh, you know, length measurement. So if I measure that, and I'll do my length measurement, we'll measure straight across here, that two point, or 3.23, so a little under, you know, three and a quarter. So that's plenty, right? I could have went with, instead of a 3 8 inch wall thickness, I could have went with a quarter inch wall thickness. But now I could take G for group, 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 selecting group, right? And I could take and snap those together and I could create, and this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna go three on the bottom, two on the top kind of thing. Um, I could go, I could, you know, um, you know, on my wine rack, I could go crazy. I could do whatever shape I want, right? I could, I could, uh, you know, um, whatever, whatever shape I, I wanted. And of course on this, if I was going to do that shape, I would rotate it around, right? So it sat on the table on those three points kind of deal. And I have a front and a back that I could do again, and I could make a wine rack holder, similar to the toilet paper holder, but you know, with a longer dowel rod between the front and the back. You know, I would need. Uh, let's see. I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to have this t so the cork stays wet. So I want it to be at a little bit of a tilt, right? So the the front part would be the neck at the neck, and the back part would be at the back. So for me, about. 10 and a half inches would be suffice. 10 and a half inches would be suffice. Now, by the way, just to show you how to get this level again, right? I'm going to bring a guideline down to here. I'm going to bring a guideline down to there. And um, I can uh, get rid of these other guidelines for a moment. But if I double click on this while it's all selected, my pivot point right here. I'm gonna bring that pivot point and snap it down to this intersection right down here at the corner. And then I'm gonna grab this and pivot this down to where you know I'm sitting on that line. Bring it up just a little bit. All right, straighten that out kind of thing, right? So that could be my wine rack, right? Uh, I could create any configuration that I want, but now I've got this toilet paper holder and then I got this wine rack out of it and I got coasters that I could do too. Um, whatever, right? And here's another, let, let me, I'm gonna make myself large, large and in charge. Uh, let's bring myself back up to a full screen here for a minute. And so this, a little salt pillar, uh, it's got a little magnet there and there. There's a screw there that it pivots on and it pivots, right? You know, but it magnet closed. 
And so it could have that, it could have any sh shape you want. This one's not quite a, you know, hexagon kind of thing, but I've got a bottom piece, I've got a lid, and if you look uh, right here, you can see those three levels, right? Those three pieces. Um, and, uh, you know, I could make a little, you know, I make this out of scrap wood, right? There's a little salt sifter. Is it sifters or salt pillars? Salt pillars. Um, and, and everything. Or a little coin box or whatever, right? So I could make all of my little parts for this out of that scrap wood as well. So there's, because when we come back, let's go, let's turn off this layer here and turn this on. I've even got this space up here to cut things out of. This space here, down here, down here. So I've got all of this empty space. I could, out of this one board, I'm going to get a toilet paper holder, one side of it. Uh, I'm going to get uh, a one side of my wine rack holder. Uh, I'm going to get, you know, uh, some coasters. I might even get some parts for the, the um, for, uh, you know, a salt sifter, whatever the case may be, right? Figure it out, you know, figure what you know, what little items you could get out of there and minimize your waste as much as possible. Do you understand? Does any of that make sense? Does that, y'all, 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 uh, y'all feeling me on that, right? And so, um, let's see here. Brooke says, man, that will be tough to drill the mounting holes without stripping the screw heads are you talking about an eighth inch hole for your uh for your uh your your screws is that what you're referring to um you know based on the anchors and everything uh and everything if if they're if they're wide if they're like you know what 832 or not the 832 maybe a little bit bigger or whatever then that eighth inch hole might be might be a little small. It's just a pilot hole. You could go bigger. Go whatever size you want, right? Um, uh, but I'm not going to go a quarter of an inch. You know, I might put throw a throw a sixteenth. Uh, hey, Brooks Pine, thank you, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I might uh, I might you know go three sixteenths inch hole, right? For those he's uh, uh, that was Brooks that said that, right? Was that Brooks? Was that you, Brooks? Yeah. Uh, that was Brooks that said, uh, you know, uh, that the pilot holes, they'd be, you know, you'd be hard to screw through, you know, and, uh, and everything, uh, without stripping your screw heads and stuff. And that's, that's, I can, I can respect that. So make it a three sixteenths inch hole, right? Now, uh, Camaro, uh, Stephen asked what this box is for. So this is a, uh, salt pillar and, um, uh, Let's see here. Salt pillar wood. Let me learn how to type here. Wood salt pillow. Um, let me pull this over on the screen there. And so uh, salt cellar, not pillar. I'm saying I'm saying the word pillar salt cellar. You goofball, Laney. Why am I calling it a pillar? Cellar. Salt cellar. Okay. So uh, it could be a little salt cellar. Uh, give you an idea. Like, like you know, uh, this here. Uh, look at this Etsy ad right there. $32.99. 4.9 star rating. 155 reviews on that part. Right? Um... And uh, it's a little salt cellar, right? So, uh, and they come in different shapes and sizes and 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 stuff like that, uh, and all. And you know, it's a salt cellar, right? And I was saying pillar, that might have confused you, but um, the uh, uh, farm and fable uh, salt cellar with pooter, pooter, pooter string, but. Um, you know things like that, and that's what it's. It's just to hold salt. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. Um, and uh, you know, but it could be a little gift box. It could be, you know, a little salt and pepper. It could be whatever, right? It's a little seasoning holder, right? Uh, and 
on Amazon, these little wooden parts, you know, $12.99, right? Bamboo one and stuff like that, $8.47. This one here, somebody's, somebody's proud of that bad boy, $98.50, right? So, um, yeah, boy. But the, uh, I think YouTube is hiding all the photos in the background. But um, the, uh, it holds salt. It's a salt cellar. That's what it is. All right, let's close that down. All right, so uh, let's go back and let's see if we have some questions. Let's see what we got here. So uh, Jeff says, uh, why not try to sell them for $145, right? Of course, try. You, it's easier to go down than it is to go up. So of course, you know, sell them for $125, $135, whatever. Try. You can always go down. It's hard to go up. So starting off with a little bit higher price is not a bad idea um, and everything. So uh, he, he did the math on that one, 145 at 285. That's $41,000 and $41,325. Uh, let's see, Menards, a one by 10 by eight foot is actually 0.75 by 9.25 by eight foot. There you go, thank you very much for that, 9.25. That's the number we were looking for earlier. Hello, Crystal. How are you doing? Is Michael with you guys? You and Steven? Hello. <laughs> uh, hopefully y'all are doing well. Um, let's see here. Um, no, when mounting to the wall, the four inch front piece will offset the drill bit. The four inch front piece will offset the drill bit. Oh, the the because it's connected together, right? You know, uh, you know, getting in getting in there with a screwdriver to that. Yeah, that's why. That's why because it's going into drywall most likely and stuff like that. Um, you could go, you know, don't go at an angle and all that stuff. But um, the uh, I use Phillips, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, bear with me just a moment. Oh, let's see. Give me just a moment. So, I'm not cheap with my customers, right? This little two-piece set right here, uh, I'd probably get a piece that's not smaller and bigger, you know, one size screwdriver, but I could find them there. Uh, they're $2, they're $1.88, they're, you know, uh, things like that. I can buy multiple packs, uh, you know, like a, you know, a 10 piece of the same screwdriver and all. And I could include that with my little hardware kit, you know, um, it's not unheard of, right? And uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna increase my, or I'm not gonna lose much profit of it because I can go bulk. Um, so offset screwdriver, offset Phillips, offset Phillips, uh, fifty piece, right? So let's see here, what do we get? Um, it did not like that. Offset Phillips. Did I spell Phillips right? screw driver we'll get rid of the 50 piece um do 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 let me find one that has the same same size tools so this three piece set here uh ten dollars for three pieces i can find them alibaba much cheaper that kind of thing whatever the case may be but, uh, you know, I'm not, it's not too unheard of. I can go to Harbor Freight and buy a bunch of them, right? Uh, for whatever. But it's not unheard of to include that with my little hardware kit, right? You ever get a, you ever get a uh, Ikea part with a little screwdriver in there and all that stuff, right? So that kind of thing. 
Um, uh, he's playing with his Nintendo Switch. <laughs> All right. Uh, not Harry Homeown, but not Harry Homeown. Hold on a second. Use an angle drill adapter, uh, right angle drill driver, good answer, <laughs> right? So uh, I don't mind, I don't mind, and, you know, for something like that for mounting purposes. Like I said, they're going to have four holes, right? They can use all four holes if they want, you know, if they're like, I want that sucker to be in there, right, kind of thing. They could use the two inside holes, the two outside holes. But yeah, you're going to have four inches. You're going to have that front piece, right? And how, how do we attack? The holes are pre-drilled. And counter saying, well, we don't want to put our screws in at an angle. You know, we want them nice and straight. So we're going to have anchors, uh, drywall anchors and stuff. Uh, most people are going to go into drywall and everything. So they drill, drill their holes. They pop in those little plastic plugs. And then they got their little Phillips screw with a little angled screwdriver they can use to mount it. All for the good, wonderful price of $135 or best offer right not best offer. don't ever do our best offer but um 135 dollars and then i could go down from there i could sell this you know i'd be happy with 75 dollars a pop uh and uh you know uh and, and everything right so right okay now little couple little tidbits for you guys and girls okay a uh, couple little tidbits uh, for you guys and girls. So, I want to show you a couple of keyboard shortcuts. The first one is the smooth button. The S, the letter S, is a great tool uh, when you're in node editing mode for smooth. Uh, the letter S is a great uh, button uh, when you're in regular drawing shapes for scaling and things like that. I want to show you today's letter for the day is the letter S, right? Um, let's say that we're going to, um, let's say that we're going to make this particular hanger here with kind of this nice curve, if you will, right? All right. So let's create a new layer. Let's turn off the other layers for a moment. Okay. All right. Now, let's say that my overall height, and, and we'll, use, we'll use the add as an example, right? On this particular part, uh, this particular part is uh, 60 millimeters by 12, or 60 centimeters by 12 centimeters, basically 23.67 inches long by seven inches uh, 4.7 inches tall and that's at the lowest part of the curve to the highest part of the highest part right so that uh, that uh, uh, you know 4.7 kind of deal now my overall board here is 26 inches right so I'm gonna take and I'm going to uh, take a guideline let's get rid of this one and I don't care where I drop the guideline down I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create a parallel guide. Let's go. Let's go 4.75 inches, right? Up. Okay. So I've got this line here. Now, this particular shape, if we were being, you know, kind of specific, it's got one hump, two, you know, kind of in the middle, and then this smaller hump here, right? So big, small. And it's, you know, it's very decorative. I love this piece. I, I really do. It's a nice piece. Uh, they've done a great job. Uh, it can be hung on the wall at, uh, you know, and, uh, and it, you know, at a slight angle and stuff, uh, you know, decorative or what have you. Comes in all kinds of different species of wood or painted and all that good stuff. And it's a, it's a cool product. 52 bucks. We could do it for 25 or 30 kind of thing, right? Uh, nothing against Amazon, but hey, we could do it better. Now, Let's imagine that I've got, you know, kind of three curves, okay? And this is our height, so from the highest to the lowest. I'm going to take a line, polyline tool, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to pick a spot, no, no rhyme or reason, right? I'm just going to go here. And then I'm going to go up a little bit. There. 
going to come down to here. And instead of going all the way up here on this one, I'm going to come down to right about there. Space bar to finish. Okay. Doesn't look like much now, but let's go into node editing mode and let's select all of those nodes. So we draw a box, they all turn red and let's hit the S key on the keyboard to smooth it out. Right. Okay. Now from there, that kind of gives me a nice little shape and stuff, but I want to make some adjustments. Number one, I want to drag this down straight across. So it's straight there. And I want to drag this up straight across. So it's straight, zoom in, drag this up straight across. So it's straight there, kind of give me that straight curve. And here, I believe I am straight across, but here's one way to find out. I can select this anchor, hold down the shift key, select this anchor and hit the letter Y to pull them up in line with one another, right? And then I wanna take this anchor and I wanna bring it straight down here. And I wanna take this anchor and bring it straight down here. And I don't like that curve, right? So I wanna kinda of balance it out a little bit. I wanna kinda of balance it out a little. And I could go in either direction. I could pull this anchor up or down or what have you. I don't want it to be like, you know, flat there, right? So I'm gonna pull that up slightly and I'm gonna pull this back slightly. Okay. Uh, nah, I like it straight. All right, let's go back up. Boop. Boop. Hold on. Don't move your guideline. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this down. That was a little too high, a little too aggressive there. I'm going to bring that down ever so slightly. And um, I am actually going to take this and pull this over a little bit, the whole thing. So I get a little bit more. There we go. That's good. Pull this straight down. There we go. All right, cool. And this one... Let's go a little bit deeper. There we go. All right, now, so I've got this general shape here. Now, that face, that face of that part is about three quarters of an inch, right? Three quarters of an inch, could be one inch or what have you. I'm gonna say, we'll call it three quarters, right? Kind of deal. Um, I can offset uh, this, and I'm gonna actually offset in both directions. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make this my center line, if you will. And again, bear with me a second. I want to just do a little bit of adjustment on this. I want to pull this over a little bit and down some. Just a, I don't want the curve being too, just a little something like that. There we go. All right, if I select this line, I'm going to use the offset tool, and I'm going to offset in both directions. Okay, I'm going to offset in both directions, uh, three eighths of an inch in both directions uh, for a total of three quarters of an inch face, right? If you will. Okay. Now I'm going to take a line tool here and I'm going to grab a line and I'm just going to, I'm going to pull an angle instead of straight across or anything like that. I'm just going to pull an angle there and just snap that angle there. No real particular reason. Uh, over here, I'm going to do the same thing, and it doesn't have to be the exact same angle and all. I just want to kind of pop that there. All right, cool beans. I'm going to take my scissors, my scissors, and I'm going to trim that little excess there, and that little excess there and there. Now, I want to kind of stay within my 26-inch board, right? I don't want to overshoot it and all that stuff like I am, I'm overshot right now. So I'm actually gonna pull this in, okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna take my quarter inch circle, boom. I'm gonna take and use that follow curve tool. I have a center line here. Remember I offset both ways, I have a center line here. Uh, I'm gonna take that circle I'm going to hold that shift key down and select that center line. And I want to create 
I'm gonna just do four, right? Four, and boom, to create those four places. Again, remember now, the line, uh, it always starts the circles on the end of the line, and I know that, I always know that, so I'm prepared for that. So I'm gonna drag a guideline down, doesn't matter where, just drag one down, and uh, I'm gonna snap my end one here, and over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. You see I'm lower there, right? Now, I don't care where the hole lands as long as it lands in and as long as it's the same on both parts that I create, right? So there's that. Remember, this side is lower than that side. So I'm just going to just snap it there. Now I can get rid of my center line. I don't need it anymore. And I have my part. Let's turn the guidelines off. Now I can take that part, hold down the control key, and drag up a copy for my second piece, right? My two parts. Now, again, I'm cutting, this is our, This is one holder here. Uh, and uh, let's bring both of these down here and everything. Now, this is a big one, uh, 26 inches long. I can make a smaller one. It doesn't have to always be 26. I can make a smaller one. I got plenty of room in here to cut out some things. I could, um, I could do whatever, right? Uh, to, I could cut other parts out of this wood, so I'm not getting a whole lot of waste. I could try, I could try on this board. I don't think I'll be able to get two more parts out of there, right, at that size and everything. Um, but I would have no problem, and I don't wanna do it that way, right, kind of thing. But uh, I would have no problem uh, making a smaller one in there and have my large size and my medium size, right? And have all four of those parts, one large, one medium out of that board, one large, one medium out of this board, one large, one medium out of that board and everything. Now I would redraw my curve and, and finesse a little bit. I wouldn't really size it down. I wouldn't shrink it down. But I could have, let me go back before I deleted my center line, if I would have left that center line, right? I could have left the center line there and I could have taken my center line and sized it down, right? Uh, don't do that, let's try that one more time. I could have taken my center line and sized it down And I could have offset that guy in both directions, three eighths of an inch. And I could create the ends. And I'm just gonna go at an angle. It doesn't matter what angle you go at, right? These are, you know, uh, custom little, not, well, they're custom, if you will. Uh, take your scissors and trim that and that, right? So I could take my circle here, remember? Hold down my shift key, select that. Ah, copy a long curve, four of those. Copy, one, two, three, four. Again, I'll just move. It doesn't matter on these parts as long as they're the same on both, the front and the back. So I'll pull that one down to there. I'll pull that one down to there. Okay, so now I'll get rid of those uh, two center lines and I'll get rid of that circle. So now I have my medium. I'll make a copy of it, drag that up there, those two parts, All right? I've got my large. I just noticed that I'm not holding the shift key when I select something. All right, I noticed that my uh, front and back are not connected together. Let me join, join those together. Okay, all right, one more time. That part's one whole part. That, 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 and that. G for group, just to kind of keep it together. Hold down that control key and drag a copy up. I'll drag this part down. Drag this part up, move this part 
Oh, that part's not connected either. Hold on one second. Drawing my lines, my angled lines, and snapping them to the end did not connect them together, did not join them. So very important that I do that now. Okay. So I can, uh, I can pivot and rotate and all that good jazz. Let me group so the holes don't move. G for group. On this one, select my holes. G for group on that one. And that was not, there we go. I can move this over here, move this one over here. Come on now, move for me. Now I can rotate, I'll pivot this bad boy a little bit, rotate them, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And get them over there, rotate him down a little. Get them on the board, get this guy. I'm going to bring him, let me bring him over here. No, let's bring him over here. Over there, over there, over there. Over there, over there, over there, over there, over there. All right, let me pivot this one up a little bit. Let me take this one and pivot him just a little. Oh, not that far. Whatever I need to do uh, to get it to fit. I could mirror it, uh, my front and backs and all, but I, I, if I mirror it, which would work, you know, would give me more room and stuff like that, then I'd have to make sure that, you know, my face is clean on both sides and all that stuff. Uh, this is the bottom side, the front, because we're drilling holes on this side, right? You know, for the pegs. So my face down is my good face, right? I don't want to... I don't want to mirror or flip apart uh, and all that stuff. Um, I could alternate this. Let's move this one up and move this one down. Is that going to work? No, that's not going to work either. Oh. Oh, all right, so we can't alternate. That's a bad idea, Laney. Let me undo that. That was negatory. Negative, negative. That's all right. I, it fits. It fits through. We're only dealing with a quarter inch router bit. Okay, or I could use an eighth inch and middle cut it out too. Anyway, get that in there. And I still got other, uh, my other parts, salt pillars, whatever I wanna cut, I can cut out of there. I'm, I'm trying to basically squeeze everything in that I can. I can even adjust my shape a little bit, right? But I wanna try to fit as much as I can in to minimize my waste, right? Trying to just, uh, as best I can make whatever little household items, my coasters, my uh, wine bottle holders, my uh, um, uh, salt pillars and all that wonderful sellers, salt sellers, all that wonderful jazz uh, and everything and just try to minimize my waste, right? So, all right, let's go and uh, uh, Doug. Hey, Doug, sorry, I wasn't looking over at the screen. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is Doug's first super chat. So Doug, man, thank you for that. I appreciate you. Doug Fushi, you are the man. I appreciate you very much. Um, but uh, uh, let's see here. Bruce says, can you move off to the side? I could. Probably so. Um, you know, uh, there's probably a few ways that I could move that and I'm just not visually seeing right now. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Um, DWC, what, hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> my head's in the way oh my god i'm still at the full size guys 
I'm still at the full size. You didn't see any of that. Hold on a minute. You goofball, Laney, what's up with you? <laughs> Let me get myself back down. There we go. Let's, let's, did you, did you get what I was trying to do? Let me, let me, hold on a minute, just for a minute there. Let me, bear with me just a second. My God, my whole head was there the whole time. Wasn't that crazy? Now I'm holding down the control Z key, right? To just get back here. Um, we started off, and I'll just, I'm not going to redraw this one, but we started off with a line, right? And this line, we're coming in here and creating a shape. We're selecting this line, go into node editing mode, hit the letter S uh, on this line, and uh, that will smooth it. Now, we want a nice smoothing here. We don't want a very subtle one like we got there. So when you draw the line, make sure that uh, it's a, a good click, not a click and hold with the line, because that'll turn the line into a curve. We want straight lines. And I'm going to go a short angle on this one down. And then I'm going to go smaller there, space bar to finish. Because when we take this and we go into node editing mode and we hit that smooth button, uh, we select those nodes and hit that letter S to smooth them out. We want that nice curve, right? Okay, so we did the letter S for smooth, but I told you, I told you that, and then from there, uh, in node editing mode, I pulled this anchor down straight. I pulled this anchor down straight, straight down. Uh, this anchor, we're going to hit the letter Y to pull that, uh, all three of those in line with one another. This anchor, hit the letter Y to pull that line straight. This anchor here, hit the letter Y to pull that straight to get that nice kind of subtle curve. And then we offset that outward in both directions. I went three for a total of, uh, you know, three quarters, three eighths of an inch outward in both directions. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a line. Now this time when I draw the line, okay, and this one over here, I don't care what angle. What I want to make sure of is that when I do my trimming, that my box is there so that when I trim this, it should join this whole part together, but it doesn't right? It doesn't do that. So I just got to make sure that I join that as one closed vector and then I can go on, right? So once again, my quarter inch hole, my path, <laughs> I can't, I'm so sorry that my head was in the way that whole 20 minutes, guys and girls, that's crazy. Uh, we're going to follow along a path and copy that along. And then again, as long as it matches for both my parts, I can put this anywhere I want. So I'm going to bring that down to there. I'll bring that down to here. And uh, that's my one part. From there, I can hold down my control key and drag a copy up. And so there's my two parts and then just move them around to make them fit on the board, right? And that, uh, just for those of you that couldn't see with my big head in the way, the part or the, 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 the thing that we were making, right, is kind of this design here. And this is a design uh, by Edward Woods, at Ewert Woods. Nice little design there. And um, it has... Uh, Let's get out of the videos. Uh, it's got a nice flow to it, right? So you can make your flow however you want kind of deal. And then those four holes, that circle we copied is for our dowel rods, right? And that could be wooden dowels or metal dowels. I like the metal dowels. You epoxy them in uh, and stuff. Uh, and um, it just, uh, 
This wood could be any you know uh, wood that you have left over or something from a project. Uh, if you were going to paint it, plywood. Uh, if you weren't going to paint it, you hardwood. It could be purple hard. It could be maple, wood, cherry, and all that stuff. And um, but that's kind of what we were you know uh, that was our muse. You know that was our muse. And we could be more dramatic with our curves, less dramatic. I went less dramatic with the curves, but they could be much deeper, right? Whatever floats your boat for this particular design, right? You could go deeper or you could go uh, shallower, you know, kind of thing uh, for the design. And this, in this uh, graphic here, I went deeper, right, for that curve and stuff. So that's that. And I just want to get them all on the board, and you know I need to make a you know a copy of this one, but uh, get them on the board and minimize my waste, right? And uh, hey, Kool Aid, what's happening, bud? Um, the uh, so uh, that's you know that's kind of that part there. Now I told you that uh, we would look at the letter S for smoothing, right? So we did the letter S for smoothing. Now let's look at the letter S for scaling. And I think this is one that you might use more so than the smoothing one. Okay. So uh, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to turn off all these other layers and hide them for a moment. Okay. And we're going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to draw a couple of shapes on the board. There's no particular rhyme or reason for this. I'm going to just draw a couple of shapes. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go uh, two and a half by two and a half inch square. So that'll be that shape. Uh, I'll go a circle. Let's go with a circle that has a three inch diameter. Okay. And let's go with a rectangle. Uh, let's go with a rectangle that, uh, let's call it uh, four and a half inches by two inches. Okay. All right. Now this does not work with a finger pad in your left button on your computer. You have to, you need a mouse for it to really work. Okay. The scale, the scale, uh, function to work and everything, but it's the letter S and what this, what, uh, what the letter S does for me is let's say that on the fly, I want to size this rectangle up to be twice its size. Okay. Now I want you to look down here at the bottom of the screen. If you can see that in your computer, it says two and a half by two and a half width and height, right? Now, if I double click on this, if I grab this box anywhere and start moving and pulling it, you know, scaling it and everything, I'm going to grab it in the corner to keep the aspect ratio, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to hit the number two and the letter S. And that's going to automatically scale it twice its size. If you look down here, it's now five by five, right? This shape here, five by five. If I came over here and did that again, let's say that I scale it again. And this time I'm going to go three S. Now it's 15 by 15. I went three, I scaled it three times that five inch, right? So that's pretty cool. All right, undo. Now let's say our circle here, our circle is a three inch diameter circle. I'm going to grab that circle and I'm going to go to S and that'll scale it up twice its size, right? Now, I don't have to just use the circle. I can also stretch, right? I can also stretch. So let's say that I want to, you know, right now I'm currently six by six on this, right? I can pull this, this in this direction and I'm going to go to S. So now it's six by 12, right? It went two times that direction that I was pulling it. It was six by six. I pulled it in that direction, hit that two S two times the scale. And now it's a six by 12. Same thing with this rectangle here. This rectangle is currently four and a half inches by two inches. I could grab this, right? And I could say 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S. And now that four and a half inches is nine inches long. You can look down at the bottom of the screen down there at the bottom, that nine inches, or we can go to the size tool and you can see it's nine inches now by two. If I pull this up, right? 
and I'll go just for kicks and giggles, I'll go 5s. Now that two inches, it's been multiplied five times, so now it's 10 inches tall, right? Not a bad little keyboard shortcut for when you're sizing things, and it doesn't matter if you're sizing things you know, along its length, its height in either direction, whatever way that you're pulling, or if you're keeping the aspect ratio, right? You type in the number, the value that you wanna scale twice the size, three times, four, five, six, that kind of thing. And then um, you are uh, uh, going to uh, type in the value followed by the letter S for scale, scale this much. And you know, with lines and stuff as well too, let's say I have a line here that is uh, two inches long. So I have a line here, two inches long. And I come in here and I grab that line and I start pulling it inward. I'll pull it to the left, right? And I'm gonna go 2S and it went to the right, right? So it's making it, you know, no matter which way you pull it, you gotta be mindful that it's not gonna, you know, I can't, I can't go smaller with it. Let's do that again. If I pull it inward, and go 1s, it's going outward, right? So the scale on my lines, I can do my shapes and all, but my lines, uh, let's go 3s, that's a 12 inch line. Let's try to drag it back in now. Pull it back in and let's go 2s. It's a 24 inch line that keeps getting bigger, right? It's not gonna go inward. But on my shapes here, my shape should go inward if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I scale this inward and I go 2S, nope, it's gonna be outward too. Dadgummit, I hate when I try to show you something and I forget the function. <laughs> it can go bigger, not smaller. <laughs> Dadgummit. Oh, it's bigger, not smaller. So I can multiply, I can scale my size larger, I just can't scale it down smaller. All right, now, that to learn more about keyboard shortcuts, ladies and gentlemen, under the help menu, keyboard shortcuts, uh, this is a nice little uh, list of all the different keyboard shortcuts uh, that one could use. Um, and uh, learning them, you don't have to know them all because there's a bunch of them, you know, there's a bunch uh, and everything, but learning those uh, keyboard shortcuts are useful uh, in, uh, in, um, in your job, right? So when you're node editing, the S smooths, and if you hit the S again, it unsmooths, it turns it back into a, you know, an unsmooth node. Right, so the S twice, right, kind of thing. But um, in node editing, the S does that smooth, right? And when we are um, moving objects and scaling objects, you can type in the value to S and you can scale the object by that factor, right? Kind of thing. So the letter S was our letter today, our keyboard shortcut letter for today. Uh, and um, the... Uh, there, it might be used for other things. Those are the only two I know right off the top of my head, right, without digging through. But try the scales one, every once in a while. And uh, uh, Tennessee Woods has a good point. He says negative 2S. Does negative, does the negative sign work? I didn't think about that. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's pull this in. And let's go negative 2S. So right now I'm at 18 inches, right? 18 inches uh, wide by 20 inches tall. So if I pull this in and go negative 2s, it's still 18 inches. Negative doesn't do anything, right? The negative doesn't do anything. So 2s, now at 36, that kind of thing. So you can scale it by the factor and you can only scale it upward if you need to scale it down, 
go in here and scale it down, or you can go into the size tool to scale it down here. And you can use your percentage box, and I'll just go 50% um, my size to scale it down 50%, right? That kind of thing. So you can use a percentage. So there's the letter S for you. Um, 0.5 S make it half as big? Question mark. Let's find out. I don't know if 0.5, I don't know if decimals work, but hey, you never know. So let's start here. We've got, let's start with a known number because my mind is going blank right about now. Two inches by two inches square, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and pull that outward and type in 0.5 S and that made it half of its, it's a decimal. 0 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.95. Okay, hold on now. Let's go 2S. Okay, so I got a two inch square. Let's make it bigger. 2S, four inch square. All right, now I want to go 60% of that four inch square. So I'm going to drag that in and I'm going to go 0.6S. And that's a 2.4 inch square. So think of 100%, 1, 1.5, 1.25, 1 1.35, right, for scaling all the way up. But also under 100%, right, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.95, 0 0.65, 0 0.2. So that kind of thing, that worked. That worked. That worked. So one or higher, one, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, all the way up to whatever, scales larger, less than one, 0 0.95, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.75, reduces it by that percentage. 75%, 95%, 80%. Think of one as 100. Interesting. Way to go, Jay Scotcha, for that little question, because I wouldn't have never checked that. Very good. Mike Perry, uh, no, the minus sign didn't work. But decimals. So think of one as 100%, two, 200%, three, 300%, four, 400%, right? We're scaling it by that percentage. If we're going 150%, that's 1.5. If we're going 50%, that's 0.5. If we're going 60%, that's 0.6, right? So that's it. Very good. There you go. All right. So even I just figured that out and learned something from that question that Jay Scotcha asked. Hey, does 0.5s work? It does. It does. So the decimal, so 100. One being 100, anything under one is reducing, right? We're, we're making it smaller of its size. Good job. Very good job. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is it for tonight. Uh, hopefully, um, let me see. Bear with me one second. Let me see if I'm. Uh, you guys had any questions and stuff that I missed. And I want to, once again, let me just give a couple of shout outs here for, for uh, you know, so... Roger Brown, uh, thank you. David Lowell, thank you very much. Uh, Brooks Martin, thank you. Doug Fushi, thank you. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Doug. And um, the uh, uh, thank you all for those super chats. I really appreciate it. But let me see if I miss any questions here. So what is that box used for? Oh, that was the salt pillar, salt cellar. That was that was Camaro's question. Um, Let's see here. Bruce says, can you move off the camera to the side? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, I wish I'd have seen that earlier, Bruce. Uh, I didn't look at the screen. Reduce yourself, Laney. Your head's in the way, brother. <laughs> and uh, you're handsome, but we cannot see anything. All right. Good. All right. I, I apologize about that, guys. That was probably irritating for about 20 minutes of time uh, and everything. But... Um, he forgot he made himself bigger, Crystal said. 
All right. So thank you all for pointing that out to me. And, uh, um, <laughs> Kool -Aid. now I read your question. Now I read your statement correctly, Kool-Aid. Uh, I, I didn't catch it the way you wrote it the first time. I read it wrong. Laney, nice to see you again, but back in your corner. <laughs> he was telling me again to go down. I didn't get it off the top of my head when I read it the first time, Kool-Aid. Uh, but um, now, Bruce says, in order to hide the dowels, wouldn't you need to do uh, in mirror image, in order to hide the dowels, wouldn't you need to do it in mirror image? Let me, let me, let me back up here. Let me get rid of all my little shapes and stuff. Let me go back in here and stuff. Now, Bruce, I think you're on to something, buddy, Row. Bear with me a second here. If I've got my two parts laid out here, okay, and I'm drilling my hole in this one, I've drilled my four holes in this part here, and that's going to be my back piece. Now, my front piece is going to be the same, you know, shape and all, but it's the front piece. So the holes, if I drill, if I keep this side up like this and I drill the holes here, then that's going to um, it's going to be, I'm going to be drilling the holes on the wrong side. Uh, I'm going to be drilling the holes on the wrong side. So Bruce, you are correct. And also one of the things I didn't put in here was the screw holes where it mounts to the wall, uh, the screw hole in the countersink. But he's absolutely right. On these parts, the back piece is going to be the back piece, right? The front piece is going to be the face. And this will be the same in Bruce's. This is going to, this is actually going to be, this is going to apply to all the ones with the dowels. There's a mirror. You got to mirror the part. So this, uh, the back's the back. So I'm not really worried about face up, face down kind of thing. The front part I am. So this part is actually, I'm going to hit the letter H. Okay, so that gets uh, cut on the back side. So the top part is going to be my back piece. The bottom part is going to be my front piece. And since this is my front piece and that's the visual piece, I need to make sure my good face on my board is down because I'm going to be drilling on the back side of this for those holes. So it does get... It does get mirrored, uh, Bruce. It does get mirrored. The part does get mirrored. And that is going to apply... to these parts as well. So we're going to have the front and the back. I need to make sure that when I carve this, my back, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, this is going to be that back drilled in. But when I cut my front piece, it's going to be kind of a, you know, a, a mirror image. And this it's all identical when I flip this one way or the other. But um, I need my good face down on the on the on that board when I cut the second board with those parts and everything. Now, these drill holes do not get carved into the front piece. And our holes are only, you know, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch deep, you know. Our boards, I'm using three quarter inch thick material. You know, 
So uh, it would be kind of a mirror opposite effect, Bruce. So in case my holes are just off like ever so slightly, right? I would want to copy that and then hit the letter H for horizontal flip. You can tell it's a horizontal flip because of that circle there versus the circle here, right? And I'm gonna group this together, group. So that way when these parts, you know, when they come together and everything, my holes, you see how they don't line up? Right, 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 right. See how they don't line up? So what I need is, let me undo that. Keep it like this. If I keep it like this, and I just cut, I use this one template right here to be the front and the back. I just have to remember that my, nope, nope. That still doesn't, that still doesn't work. Because if this is my front, it still gets flipped around and the holes don't line up. These holes don't line up. So we gotta make those holes line up. So let's take this circle here. We're gonna get rid of it, hit the letter D on the keyboard. And this circle here, get rid of it, hit the letter D on the keyboard. We're gonna take these two circles here and here and we're going to mirror them, flipping them about job center and create a mirrored copy and flip horizontally to position them there. That's important. So now if I take this part and I flip it, and you can tell because of that circle there versus here, I bring this down my hole should line up all right Bruce good catch good catch hey Camaro thank you very much man I appreciate you man I appreciate you uh, so good catch Bruce DeGarmo the parts need to be mirrored for front and back front and back I would have screwed us all up we'd have been like man the holes don't match up Laney all right now what I'm gonna do on these parts, I'm gonna clean this up, and we're gonna say goodbye right now. I'm gonna clean this up. I'll create tool paths for it, but I'll also create vector files, SVG and DXF for these. And um, I will make these files available for digital download on this video in the description. You got to give me a couple of days because I got a big class coming up that I got to do and stuff. But um, I'll make these available. And if any of you make one of these or you make the coasters and these and this and that, whatever, if you make any, make one, please email me a picture. I'd love to see it. Uh, but I'll make the files available for download for all three. The one that can be glued together to make the wide solid piece out of plywood or MDF that you're going to paint. Uh, the same one that's going to be the two separate pieces with the dowel. Again, that's going to get mirrored as well. Uh, this octagon uh, or hexagon uh, honeycomb part, the wavy part, and then uh, even the little uh, coasters and wine racks. I'll make all those vectors available. I'll, I'll lay it all out and clean it up, and I'll put it in the description. you got to give me a couple of days, but I'll make an announcement on this channel in the little post announcements that the files are available for download when they are. And you can download them. And if any of you actually make one of these, I'd love to see it. All right. I want to thank my Super Chatters. I got another one. Oh, Kool-Aid. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, bud. Appreciate all of you um, and everything. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, it won't apply to that one. Only if you don't want to see the dowels. Yeah, I don't want to see the dowels. The dowels are going to get uh, halfway through. On, 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 each, on the inside, uh, the dowel cuts, they're gonna be about three eighths of an inch deep. 
uh, and stuff uh, when the parts press together. Um, I don't want to see the dowel holes on the front. I, especially if I got a nice purple heart piece or something or walnut or something, I don't want to see the dowel holes uh, and stuff. So uh, they're going to get cut under. Uh, let's see here. I think you are right, Bruce. Yeah, Wade. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's say goodbye. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you all for the super chatters. Thank you all for everybody. Everybody, I, I love you all the same, uh, you know, and everything. The super chatters just help me with uh, buying wood for the shop and coming up with ideas and, uh, you know, and all that stuff. And so it helps. I appreciate you very much. Uh, I can I can uh, buy my mama groceries this week now. Just kidding. But um, uh, my cat can get some food. Uh, and uh, I can get some wood and drill bits and router bits and all that wonderful stuff. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it because it does help out a lot. It all adds up. All right, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful night. I'll make these files available. I'll put an announcement out when they are available. I'll clean everything up all nice and pretty. If you don't have version 11.505 that I'm working in here, uh, then the vector files will be available that you can just import and recreate the tool paths and stuff in your version of the software. So I'll make SVG and DXF because some of you can't export or import SVG. I remember only some of you can do D, uh, uh, some of you can't do DXF. You can only do SVG on the programs you use. But um, yeah, until next time, we'll see you. All right, guys and girls, thanks for everything. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful night.